Welcome to this biomechanics video about tissue mechanics of tendon and ligament. In this video we'll be talking about the viscoelastic behavior of tendon and ligament. Viscoelastic behavior is characterized by a viscous response from a material. So you're probably used to thinking about viscosity in terms of fluids and how fluids uh, exhibit friction as the layers slide past each other, that viscous nature. Um, some solid materials display that along with the elastic behavior that we're used to thinking about in traditional engineering materials. So the idea of energy storage and return in an elastic manner, like we see in a stress strain curve. When you couple these two things together in a material, you get what's called viscoelastic behavior. And what that means is that you have a material that has history dependent mechanics. So to describe the ways that uh, a tissue like uh, tendon or a material, a viscous material, viscoelastic, to describe the ways that a viscoelastic material like tendon or ligament uh, is characterized, uh, we're going to look at a couple of key parameters. But first, we're going to think about how we measure mechanical properties of a tendon. So here's a tendon. It's in clamps for a mechanical testing system like an MTS. And we're going to apply a force to it to measure its properties and tension. So when we do that, the first thing you'll notice when you load and unload the tendon is that the up curve is different than the down curve. And this region in the middle corresponds to energy loss. So that all of the energy is not returned. You lose some energy in the process. And this is a phenomenon known as hysteresis. So energy loss as you load and unload a tendon, or the material. Energy loss as you load and unload a material hysteresis. It's one of the key characteristics of viscoelastic behavior. Another characteristic of viscoelastic behavior is when you get different responses based on how fast you load the material. So if you load it quickly, you end up with a steep slope for tendon, and if you load it slowly, you end up with a shallower slope for tendon. This is known as rate dependence. So the loading rate plays a role in how stiff the material is another key feature of viscoelastic behavior. Then there's what happens when you apply a set change in length to the tendon, shown there, and measure the force over time as you hold the length constant. So if you do that, you'll notice that the load drops off. There's a change in force over time. And this is called load relaxation, where you're holding the displacement constant and you observe a drop in force as a result. And then finally, when you apply a set force and monitor the uh, displacement required to maintain the force, you have a phenomenon called creep, where you have a change in length, change in deformation, as you hold the load constant. So you're keeping a constant force, and you're observing that in order to keep the constant force, you have to make you have to stretch the tissue more and more and more and this is called creep and this actually does occur in some uh, engineering materials as well uh, this is very noticeable in something like glass which cold flows uh, if you ever have looked at an old piece of glass you'll notice that it's thicker at the bottom than it is at the top that's because under the weight of the glass the glass has crept downward has cold flowed down the, um, the length of the glass so those are the four characteristics of viscoelastic behavior, and tendon and ligament are highly viscoelastic, which actually works to our advantage. For example, here's a calf stretch. Is this an example of hysteresis, load response, or load relaxation, or creep response? You said load rex relaxation, you're right. You're applying a constant deformation, and the amount of force being generated by your muscle is decreasing over time. Or scoliosis treatment. So if you have bad scoliosis, uh, someone has bad scoliosis, a curved spine, uh, one of the treatments that they will do before they go to the level of inserting a rod in the spine is to use bracing, where the subject wears a bracing for a significant fraction of the day, uh, maybe tw as many as 20 hours a day. And the idea is that you're applying pressure to the body in the places shown there. So is this an example of hysteresis, load relaxation, or creep response? You said creep response, you're right, you're applying a constant load, 
and you're uh, having a deformation in response to it. There's lots of other places where you can see this in the body, uh, in the bones and in the uh, so tendons and ligaments because they're both, they both have a significant collagen component. So they both exhibit this viscoelastic behavior, but tendon and ligament exhibit it much more strongly, uh, much more obviously than bone. So finally, a uh, note on modeling viscoelastic behavior. Uh, for some applications, you need to do mathematical modeling to understand the behavior of tendon and ligament. Uh, there's a bunch of different models. Maxwell and Voigt are two of the simpler models for vi modeling viscoelastic behavior. You typically use spring elements for elasticity and dash pots for the viscous elements, and then you can write equations as shown here. We're not going to go into that in this particular class, but if you ever do things with viscoelastic behavior, uh, those are the kinds of things you'll want to be exploring. So with that, bring your questions. As always, I'll see you in class.